Good morning. We're going to use Replit so we can um, look at how we can use Java Swing to make a GUI um, library using the Replit online IDE. So you can even use the online IDE. For example, if you're running on a Chromebook or doing something else where you don't have access to the regular Swing library system, but you still want to do some GUI programming, and so we can use Replit to make that happen. So we're going to see what we have to do. As you can see, I just clicked on the new Repl so I can make a new Replit for this. I'm going to choose Swing right here. And so if I just type in swing, automatically takes me to Java Swing, has a nice little new button on there, fantastic stuff, and click Create REPL. And here we have in our brand new REPL, main.java with absolutely nothing in it, so we have to actually make something happen. So in order to do that, of course, we have to make a runner class that can do something with this. And so we'll go ahead and get started by making a new runner class. So we're going to do, on the runner class, we'll just go ahead and do import. And we're going to do javax.swing.j option pane. It's so going to do the first really basic one, so we have to use a pop-up window for a really basic GUI, and then we'll go more and do more stuff with that. Then we're going to make a class called main, because of course it's inside main.java, so it has to match. So public class main. And inside the main, we'll make our runner method, aka public static void main. So here we have our public static void main, and we're going to do a quick little amazing GUI pop-up by simply using a JOption pane show message dialog window. So we'll do that really fast. So we do a JOption pane. And to do a JOption pane dialog message, it's simply JOption pane dot show message dialog. It's a static method that exists inside JOption pane. The first parameter is null because there's not an owner for this window. And then the second parameter is a string to actually show us the display on that. So we have just a quick line inside the main that's going to do a pop-up for us. So we'll go ahead and hit run and make that happen. It has to go ahead and start up the server that's going to be running for that information. This does take a little bit longer than a regular Java REPL. That's okay. We'll see what happens as we see this going on. So we just take a little bit of time to wait. And it'll actually wait with you. And see, we just wait a bit, no big deal. Bing, there's our cute little message with hello, yay. And when I hit okay, the app is over. Okay, that's great. So we just made a pop-up window that exists, it functions, it runs. And all we had to do was import javax.swing.joptionpane. And we used joptionpane.showMessageDialog, passed it first null, and the second parameter is the string we want to display. Amazing stuff. Now let's make this do something a little bit more amazing. Let's make it so we can actually use a window with something, and so we'll go on and do something with that. Now, again, we make files over here inside this to make new files for this, and we want to, of course, make it so we have the most information hidden as possible when writing, trying to do good programming strategies. So we want to make sure things that actually show some information for that. But for our first example, we're just going to make something really quick and simple, and then we're going to make it so we can do a little bit more for that. But we're going to start off right here with this. So I'm going to add a new line after this for import statements. I'm going to import a J frame. I'm going to import the javax.swing.jframe library, which gives me access to the jframe, which is the window-based tool that we use to do all the windowing applications inside Swing. We can see some more stuff with that. And so I'm going to make a jframe instance, set its size and set its visibility, and we'll have it show up after the pop-up message shows up. So we'll do that right here. And so we'll make a jframe, my frame, amazing name I know, equals new jframe. No parameters for the constructor. And then we're going to say my frame dot set size and we'll pass it in this case 400 comma 400 it's a nice size it's a square we can easily see and notice inside our screen and finally my frame dot set visible and inside the set visible we'll pass it the value of true the reason we have to set visible true is because if we don't set it visible it won't show up and that's not really that helpful of an app. So let's make this happen. So again, we're going to keep our same pop-up message, just adding to that. We're not going to make a window show up that just is a frame. It should be 400 by 400 in size, and we should be able to see it. So we'll go ahead and hit run. We wait just a little bit. It takes a bit of time. No big deal. Hey, there's our pop-up window. It says hello. Fantastic. Now I have a window. Wow. This window is not exactly user friendly though. If I go ahead and I scroll this down a bit, as you can see, there is nothing to do with this. This is the most amazingly not helpful piece of software. Yeah. So again, we want to make sure we actually do something with this and a JFrame by and of itself isn't enough to actually do anything. But we can see right here, we can easily make a quick little main method that causes a JFrame to pop up and exist. So let's go ahead and let's do something a little bit more advanced and do some separation of code and factor it out into a couple different classes and go from there. So again, do a quick little review of what we just did. We made a pop-up window with the joptionpane.showMessage dialog. That makes something show up and show to the user, which you can just click away to get past. And we did jframe. We made it and we set its size to be 400 by 400, and we set it visibly true so it can show up and we can see it. Really cool stuff. Let's go ahead and let's do a bit more with that by making it a couple different classes and doing some things with it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new class. And so we're going to make a myframe. 
myframe.java. And we're gonna go inside myframe.java, we're gonna do import, and then javax.swing.jframe. And public class myframe. And so in my myframe class, we're gonna inherit from jframe, so we'll do extends jframe. So we get access to all the jframe library components. We're gonna make a constructor for it. So we're gonna make a public myframe. First line of constructor, of course, should be a call to super. So we get the super call. And explicitly, even though we already know it's calling the default constructor by default, we've got that good to go. And then we're gonna call our helper method setup frame. And a helper method is so we can get everything looking nice and pretty so we can have that all happen. And so inside here, I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna make a quick little size on here. So this dot set size, and we'll say 500 comma 500. So we know it's gonna be 500 pixels across, 500 pixels down. We wanna go this dot set title and give it a string for the title you want it to be. And we'll go ahead and we'll set this to be, say, our first GUI. And this dot set visible. And pass it true. Because again, the last line of the frames initialization needs to be true so we can see it on the screen. So we have a quick little class of, um, that extends JFrame. We have it right here. And this right here will just make a quick JFrame automatically right there. So we'll demo this back inside our main so we can see how this works. And then we'll go ahead and add a panel to the class and do some work inside that. So I'm going to go back over here. And instead of having my frame as a new JFrame and my frame that set size set visible true, we're going to go ahead and comment that out. So we'll comment those out. We'll make a new instance of the my frame class. So my frame app equals new my frame. Open and close call for a constructor. And that's all we have to do. So we'll go ahead and run that up. And we're going to change our message on this one instead of saying hello and custom class demo. So we have a new J option pane. It's going to say custom class demo. And then we're going to make our new MyFrame instance, which is going to have that happen. So I'm going to head stop the existing code and rerun it. We have our custom class demo. And there's our new window, 500 by 500 with nothing in it. Because a frame really is just a holder for stuff. It doesn't really do that much. It's just there to have it happen. So let's go ahead and let's do a little bit more than simply just show that screen right here inside that corner. Let's put a panel inside that screen that has buttons and stuff. We can do that. So we're going to go back over here inside our thing. We're going to add a new file. And we're going to call this custom panel because this is a J panel and .java, of course. And the first line is going to be import. And we're going to do java dot, java x, excuse me, dot swing dot j panel. And we're going to have public class custom panel extends j panel. So we have our custom class that extends j panel. Wonderful stuff. And we're just going to do a quick little constructor for it as well. So public custom panel. First line of a constructor should be the call to super because we want to have good custom uh, code. And we're going to then have inside here, we'll do a quick little setup panel method. So we'll make a helper method called private void setup panel. And we'll call it inside the constructor as well. And inside here, we're going to just make it so we can easily see that we have a screen that exists. So we're going to go this dot set background, and we're going to pass it color dot magenta. So we import Java awt dot color so we can get access to a color library. We're going to set our background to magenta so we can see that we have the uh, background in here. We're going to go ahead and we're also going to make it so that we have inside our panel. Let's put a button in there. So we'll make a data member. And so we'll make a private J button. And we'll call it sample button. And because J button is its own class, we'll import that as well. So import Java X dot swing dot J button. And we'll initialize our button inside here. And everything in the swing library basically starts off with just a string as a parameter. 
So we'll hit, say sample button equals new J button and then quotes and click and a semicolon. So we've got a button that's in there. Nothing's going to happen with it. We're going to go ahead and put the button into the panel. And so we'll say this.add and we'll put sample button. So the button is existing. It's in there, but it doesn't do anything. And that's okay. So we should have a button on the screen. The screen should be magenta. And we've got that right there. And now in order to do that, we have to add this custom panel to our frame. So let's go back over to our frame class. And in our frame, we're going to make an instance of our custom panel. So we'll go ahead and make a private variable for it. And we'll call it app panel. Amazing name. And we're going to go inside here and we're going to say the app panel equals new. And it's going to be a custom panel. Call its constructor. Amazing stuff. And then inside set um, setup frame, we'll load that frame or that panel into the frame. So we'll say this dot set content pane. And we'll pass it the custom panel instance. So now we have something inside there. So we've got our, our frame. It's going to call setup frame, which will install the panel in there. It's going to be 500 by 500. It's going to say our first GUI, and we should see it. So I go ahead and stop this and rerun it. We have our custom class demo. And now we have a button that we can click, and it's amazing. Now, this is just a quick little demo. In order to do more with this, we have to add some functionality and features to the panel because, again, the panel class, custom panel.java, is where all the work is going to happen for the GUI based interaction. The frame itself, all it's going to do is just make the basic components right here so you can get access to it. And so we can actually see what's going on inside the actual panel and what's going on. So the frame is just to hold the window in place. The panel is where all the work happens. And to do that, we have to attach listeners or stuff to our panel. So we can actually arrange things and put things in there, make it so it works the way we want it to. And we can do that doing some other stuff. If you want to see some other examples of how to work with buttons and GUIs, you can go ahead and check out some of my other videos. I'll add another uh, Replit video on how to actually do more with Replit using this right here, using a custom listener and stuff like that. But the, again, this is just a quick little demo so you can make a GUI interface using Replit and have it happen right there. So again, let's take a look at the main.java so we start off where we're going. The first thing we do is we have to import javax.swing.japsion pane to make a pop up happen, and javax.jframe to make a simple default frame. We then made a pop up window happen that just explains what we're doing, and we made a default frame that just made 400 by 400. It was just a window we could see, but nothing happened. Well, then we decided to go ahead and go a little bit further and make a custom class. We have a custom frame and a custom panel. The custom frame is the window that holds everything in place, and it has an instance of custom panel inside it. The MyFrame constructor has a call to super. It then instantiates its data member of app panel. We then call the setup frame helper method where we install that panel into the frame. We set how big it's going to be. We give it a title, which doesn't show up very well on side Replit. Sorry, but hey, that's okay. And we then set it to be visibly true. If I don't show it true, if I comment that line out, this is the most amazing thing ever. I run this, I call setup frame, and oh, oh, look at that. It terminated. If it's not visible, it just shuts down. So you want to make sure that you have a visible line as the last line for when you're working with a GUI. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. So go ahead and run that again. Hit stop. Play. We run this up again. We're going to get a pop-up window happen again. Do, 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 do. Class demo. And boom, we've got my pink screen right there. So again, you have to make sure you install that. This line installs the panel. So we go to our custom panel. In our custom panel, we have a J button. We call the super constructor. We initialize our J button. We call our setup panel. We make it have a background. We add that panel, the button to the panel. We're good to go. Again, if you want to take a look at this, check a look at my other YouTube videos. There's some great examples on how to do more with that. I'll make sure I put in a link to this API, um, excuse me. I'll make sure I put a link to this URL inside the video itself so you can come and see what's going on with that so you can see the basic structure, copy it and work for it yourselves. Have a great day and I hope to see you again in the future. Thanks. Bye.